and then just we'll get into this thing. Um, okay. But because what, what I normally do is I'll like, I'll, uh, I like, like, uh, have an in, have an intro and all that stuff and make it sound all pretty. So I just literally hit the record. So, okay. but thank you for doing this. I, again, I really, really appreciate it. Have you ever been interviewed on a podcast before? No. Have you ever been interviewed at all? No. <laughs> nice. Well, my interview style, I'm sure as you can tell is really not professional. And not, like, <laughs> it's just chilling. So, um, but no, the reason I wanted you on the podcast is because you've been making, like I said, uh, in our off camera conversation is, uh, you've been just doing so well with all of this where like, it started off as just like fitnessy fat loss. And then it's like, it's you, you like you, you become happier. Your outside of fitness life has gotten better. Like all areas mm -hmm. you're just like fucking thriving. And I just, that's why I want to talk about it. So for sure. Um, so let me ask you this before. So what was your, so everyone can kind of get cop to speed your story, so to speak before, like we started working together and before all this change started happening, like what, what did things look like for you? Uh, I don't know. I was always kind of the chubby kid. Um, I got told by grant, my grandparents that, or my grandpa that I was like the fat kid kind of, um, I was, I played a lot of sports, but like, I always had, had my dad and people say, Oh, you got to get back into shape. You know, basketball season starting up right away. You want to be the starting point guard. And it was like, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Didn't think I was that out of shape, but apparently <laughs> I am. And then, you know, I played a lot of sports throughout school and then I got a little bit older and you realize that that's not going to take you anywhere. <laughs> so then you quit and then the weight just kind of started coming on and on. And, you know, I witnessed my mom had issues with her weight all her life. I don't ever remember seeing my mom in a bathing suit ever in my life. Really? And no, I never, like maybe when I was really young, but not ever. And, you know, she emotionally ate, I emotionally ate. Um, like, you know, you always use that example. Like you wouldn't see, give the kid uh they, that saw their dog die mm -hmm. like food but that's kind of what happened but really? it was all the time yeah mm -hmm. it's like oh you're really upset what can I make you and it was like oh okay you know and that's just the way it was and you know after my mom passed away I think so many people brought me food that's all they brought was sure. like food and stuff and it was like oh okay and I gained probably I want to say close to 30 pounds after my mom passed away in 2011 mm. and, it, and I just couldn't get it off. Like, yeah. and I would go through waves of working out, but never strength training. Cause that was not what I did. I don't sweat I, enough. Like it's not intense enough. Like, <laughs> yeah. Right. And I, I always played running sports. I played basketball. I played baseball. Like, you know, it was never something I ever did. Yeah. So then we, I would go through waves of doing that and doing stairs in the Edmonton river Valley, which is awesome. But I mean, you can only do that in the summer. It's too cold in the winter and the, <laughs> you know, and it was awesome. But then I would work, I had a couple of different trainers that I would work with and most of them were terrible and they mm -hmm. just were not good people to work with. They weren't a good fit. I had one that wanted me to do the mental work and I was like, mm, no, no, mm. we're good. Just, I just want to work out. Just, yeah. I wasn't in any position that I was ready to deal with things. And then, you know, uh, oh, my dad passed away in 2017 and I, I gained a little bit more weight then cause did the same thing I did when my mom passed away. Right. I ate, mm. ate my feelings. So I didn't feel it. And then I started thinking I should really do something about this. And I started working out a little bit more, but just running stuff like that and then uh i decided to start going to therapy in thir in uh last last february i guess that's awesome and it just to deal with other things like other relationship issues sure. and she's like you know maybe you should think about journaling and i was like eh, uh, maybe mm. maybe and that's i kind of corny what the hell like why that's yeah right and you're like this this is this feels stupid but i did it a little bit and it I felt better and I was like, yeah, all right. Well, I did it a little bit in February and March and then I kind of like let it go because I was like feeling better about my life. And then in the summer, because I mean, there's nothing to do. And my husband just started back at work and I was by myself. I started scrolling TikTok and I found your stuff. Yeah. And I was like, this guy makes sense. <laughs> like, fuck. 
He makes sense and makes swears sense. all the time. There's something about oh, him. He's got this guy. I get this guy. He makes sense. And I was, so I got your free course and I was like, okay, maybe I'll try some of the strength training gibberish. I don't know. <laughs> so I, I'm like, I guess we'll give it a shot. And I tried it and I was like, oh, this isn't too bad. It's all right, I guess. So then I started doing that. And then I just figured one day I was like, what the hell? I'll throw an application in. Let's let's just give that a shot. If if it works, it works. And then next thing I know, like you're talking about when I want to start. And I was like, uh, tomorrow? And I was like, what did I just do? You're like, okay, let's go. Let's fucking <laughs> I was go. Like, I guess I'm doing this. That's awesome. So yeah. I see, then, I didn't so that's the first one for me. I didn't know. I thought I, I didn't know you were like, I thought you were just like chomping at the bit ready to go. I didn't know it was like, what the fuck did I just sign up for? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it kind of was. I was just like, oh. I'm doing this, I guess. Like it just came right out of my mouth. And I was like, all right, this is how we're going. That's awesome. And yeah. And then it was just, I think I had a meltdown in, I think in October and you said, like we had a conversation and I, you said, maybe you should start journaling or something like to that effect. And I was like, that's the second person to tell mm. me this year. <laughs> I was like, maybe I should really give this an honest shot. So I started and I felt so much better. And I was like, oh, weird. Like, I feel like a weight's lifted off my shoulders. Yeah. And then I did it again the next day. And I was like, wow, like, this is better. And then I just started doing it every day. And I was like, I don't really know how I'm doing this. And I think you posted something about the way you do it with you start with gratitude and then yeah. like kind of a brain dump and then other stuff that you're working on. And I was like, okay, well, that's that seems like easy enough. I could probably do that. So that's how I kind of do it. And it was... I, every day, almost every day, I think I journal and I feel so much better. I would run things through my head and just get more and more and more worked up all the time. And I'd replay it and I'd just, oh, it was awful. And I don't do that as much anymore. Um, I started going to therapy again, doing video conferences That's with amazing. my therapist. And she, she says I look happier than I did in the, in the, fall, in the winter, I guess. And she's like, wow, like the first, that was the first thing out of her mouth is that, holy crap, you look so different. You look happier. You, there's something huge that just happened to you. And I was like, weird. Like, I barely know you. How do you know that? And yeah, so it was, that. that's kind of my story. No, I love that so much. Like that. And that's the thing is like, I'm such an energy guy. Like I can tell you right now, your energy, like comparing it to like our first conversation we've ever had, your energy is like on another, it's not even on like the same planet. Like, you know, how like, it's like you see a puppy and then you see a full grown dog and it's like, they're obviously very different. Like, it's like, that's how it is. Is like, you're, it's like, you just like beam this beautiful, bright light of energy. And I'm sure everyone that's listening to this by the time it gets to them, like can feel it. You know what I mean? Cause like, uh, it's, it's just insane. Like it's, it's, that's why I just loved every, every second of this. It's like everything from your like physical progress. It's just been like, holy fuck, holy fuck, holy fuck, holy fuck. <laughs> but then like, but here's the thing is what most people are stuck with is that, uh, they might get holy fuck physical results, but they are wrecked inside. And mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure people listening right now that are in that position are like, yeah, that's me. Like most people who have lived in the place of trendy dieting, yo-yo, yo-yo stuff, binging, bad food relationships, they'll get cool results, but they are terrified of losing it. And then they are just still wrecked inside. It was like the more they got what they wanted, the worse their inner world became. But yours hasn't been like that. You've been like, no. it's the other way. So talk about, talk about that, how like these two worlds for you like I talk about the psychology of fat loss, like dieting from the inside out, but you've like taken that concept and fucking ran with it. So talk about that. Oh, well, like, I think it was, I was in the gym and I was listening to one of your you know, emotional podcasts. That was like the worst idea of my life. to listen Yeah, that's to that dangerous again. territory right there. <laughs> oh, that was the worst idea I, there. You need to have a disclaimer on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Trigger warning. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely hit me hard and it was like, wow, that's me. Like, I really need to work on some shit. So I, I don't know, like, I just decided to make those emotional and mental changes and really start to listen to some of your more psychology of fat loss, like podcasts and really take inventory of what I do and what I don't do and how I can fix that. 
So I love that. What was the moment for you? Unless that was, what was that it? Like, what was the, yeah, that was a turning point that where was it was totally like, turning point. holy shit. If I want to have anything long lasting physically, I have to address this mental stuff. Was that that oh, moment? Yeah. Man, yeah. that's just like right in the middle of a gym, like in front of everybody, oh, you're just like awful. having a breakdown. <laughs> I had to like get that workout done as fast as I could and then get the hell out of there. That's and so then I sat funny. in my truck and cried for like 20 minutes. I love that. That's the thing is people are so resistant to that. Like I have a buddy of mine, like not a client, not a fitnessy person I talk to. He's just, he actually, I do jujitsu with him. So it's just like, and we're just buddies. We go get Taco Bell together and all the time. So like we, uh, he's apparently we had a sit down. We, we got lunch the other day and sat down and he just like started unloading. And I'm just like, okay, we're going to have a, we're going to have a fucking therapy session right here. Like we started talking about this stuff, started bringing up all this shit he struggles with. And he's like, yeah, dude, I hadn't cried in like a year that all of a sudden I just bawled my, I ugly cried the other day. And then I smiled afterwards and it's like, I don't know, but like people don't realize like going through that and like what you did is literally how you get this out. It's like being, having food poisoning. You just need to shit your brains out to get it out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> it is true. Yeah. Now, have you been, now when it comes to this kind of stuff, have you ever before this thought about like how these two worlds are mixed together or was it all like, no, I just need to work harder kind of thing. Yeah. I just need to work harder. I just needed, to, I figured I just needed to eat less. Like I ate like a thousand calories for a while when I was like probably 27 mm. and I lost like 40 pounds and, but, but it was never anything that I, I never did anything else. Right. I just ate low and ran my face off. Like I just ran and ran and ran, right. but that was it. And then it came back and cause I never dealt with anything else. I totally ate like an asshole and just figured I could outwork it. Right. Yeah. And it didn't really matter. I would eat low and then I would go back and I'd just yo-yo back and forth. And I never really thought about it. I, I definitely didn't look at anything else like protein. Like I didn't even give a crap. I just ate what I ate and it didn't matter. <laughs> sure. So. No, I get that. Well, and that's the thing is like, this is the thing where I think that all the work matters is we go from like dieting and like, I want to lose weight and being making, doing stupid stuff like trendy diets. But then it's like, all right, let's get in the world of sustainability. But what we've done is we've gone even a level deeper with that where it's like, all right, we like no trendy diets, carbs aren't bad, good for proteins, awesome, no macro ratios, like sustainable stuff. But then it's like, there's that lower, that level below it where it's like, what shit, like, let's talk about how you process emotions. Let's talk about like how, like where it's, we have a tendency to, you know, cover up um, emotional baggage with food or distractions or more workouts and things like that. And that's where you've made so many of your changes is just getting so much deeper, which has just been insane. What's now, do, does your like husband or friends say anything? Are they like, what are you on? Or like, what is there anything like that? <laughs> I've had a lot of people at work say they've noticed that I'm way happier in my life. Uh, like, and some of my friends have noticed too, but then like, like my husband sees me all the time, yeah. but, and so he's seen kind of the gradual change, but yeah, I, I get it from people at work mostly that I'm. I, I, I guess I have a real resting bitch face. Nice. So, <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, I work with a bunch of guys and I'm in receiving. So I've got to deal with a lot of truck drivers and sometimes they're stupid. Right. And they don't want to listen. So yep. I'm, I can be pretty rough and tough at work, but there we go. I'm a big crybaby when I come home. <laughs> nice. No, that's how it should be though. That's, that's amazing. Now, was it hard for you realizing this foundational aspect of it? Like, was it harder for you to like make that shift from like almost I would argue unlearning a level of conditioning. If your old conditioning was uh, mindset stuff is stupid. I've got to just work my face off and diet like till I can't breathe anymore to like, wait a second and unlearn that like what we've been working through and then relearn this new stuff with like the foundational inner work side has uh, has that was that a hard switch or was that pretty easy? It was really easy because I just decided that like when I first started watching your TikToks, I was like, this guy gets it. I got, I like this. <laughs> I like the way he rolls. So I'm like, let's just, let's just do it. It makes complete and total sense. So I just dove head first and I just accepted it and started going. I love that. You know, one of the things that I love about your journey specifically, like with everything you're saying is, is how there wasn't any, like how to put, like there wasn't any certainty. Like you weren't like, didn't have it all figured out. You're like, all right. I don't know if journaling is going to work, but I'm going to fucking try it. All right. I've never done the sitting with your emotions bullshit, but I'm going to like, give it a go. Or like, like, like so many people wait till they understand every facet till they, their, their mind is right till 
all this stuff and they never execute. They like, they just are in a perpetual state of waiting, but you're like, let's go. I don't care. Let's go. I don't care. It's almost like you don't have to understand how your engine works. You just stepped on the gas, you know? Yeah, basically. Yeah. I just figured, well, what's the worst that could happen? Like, right. It, I don't like it. Okay. Well, and what's funny is a lot of people don't think like that. A lot of people like, it's interesting. So for me, I'm like, either option sucks, right? Like, it's like, you can keep doing what you're doing and your life is living hell or you try it this way and you can't go any lower. Like you're already in a living hell. You can't get worse. If anything, you might have a chance of this working, but it's like both options are going to take some work and they suck. So this one at least has a better outcome. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So, now, let me ask you this after having gone through so much of this stuff, cause there's always like other levels, like you'll keep going through levels and stuff, but after having this massive hump coming over and having done all this work, where would you th say things are at like specifically, like you're just thriving on all levels or like there's still some stuff you struggle with or where are things at now? Um, I think for the most part I'm thriving. Like I've actually probably started to deal with a lot of grief that I've had through my, through all of this and dealing with a lot of other stuff. So I'm, but I feel like I'm actually mo moving forward in a big way. It's, it's the whole premise of this giant tree on my arm now is like that concept of like growing or dying. There is no, no sitting still. Cause like, imagine if you like just stayed, like you would actually have gotten worse. You know what I mean? Oh, it's for like, sure. Like it's why we see people when it comes to like trauma or issues, it just, it's like an infection. Like when we suppress stuff, it doesn't just stay there. It like, it's like, an, you, you, you don't look at an infection and now the infection's bigger. It's more gross. It's nastier. Mm -hmm. It's bigger, bigger than some people either have panic attacks, meltdowns, um, harm themselves, blow up on their partner over something, run 80 year old Mr. Jones off the road, who knows? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but, but that's why it's been just awesome. Now, let me ask you this. How much of a difference has all this inner work? Obviously fitness wise, it's made a massive difference. Like a lot of people have this misconception where um, they're like, okay, I got to do all the end of this inner work stuff. So I can't make fat loss progress where it's like, they're not mutually exclusive. Like you can totally do both these at the same time. Like we've done now. Um, Cause obviously you've made crazy fat loss progress, but um, how much, what's what stuff and in, in what context has outside of fitness, like with whether work, family relationships, dogs, whatever, has this changed for you? Um, I'm just happier. Like, I think my relationship with my husband has gotten better over That's the awesome. last couple months. Um, like at work, I just don't let things get to me as much anymore. I'm just, I just feel like so much happier in general. Which, which is interesting. And I love every second. I like, I love all that, but which is amazing because at the end of the day, I'm fully convinced. I can't remember if we talked about this way back when I'm convinced we do everything we do because we think it'll make us happier. That's honestly what drives our lives is like, what will make me happier? And the fact that like, not just getting your shit together physically, but like all the emotional shit, it's like, cause I talk about, I have a podcast about it. Like you're your foundation and you now take, you got your shit good. Now you take that good to everything you do. It's like a yeah. neat freak everywhere. If a person's a neat freak, their office is clean, their house is clean, their dogs are clean, their freaking toilets clean. But then like, if they just drop that standard and they don't care anymore, office gets dirty, house gets dirty, everything gets dirty. But the fact that you've been able to like fix everything internally, and now you've taken that to like your marriage. Now that's even better. You take it to work. That's better. Take it to friend's house. That's better. It's, it's just, it's just awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. So let me ask you this. I know we, journaling is one of them because we've talked about it. What are a few things in or if it may be just journaling, that's fine too. What is some of the biggest from a tactical standpoint, um, tactics that's made the biggest difference for you? Is it like the journaling? Has it been just sitting in silence? Has it been just like not covering up emotions with food? Like what would you say is your biggest thing that like, or biggest things that day to day has made a difference for you? Uh, probably the journaling for sure. And being able to like, just take inventory of like how I'm feeling, why I'm doing what I'm doing. And like, I think it was on Friday at work, I was pissed off about something and I just kept playing it in my head. And I was like, Whoa, what are you doing? Like, you don't need to be upset about this. It's done. It's over. Like move on. And I was like, but I'm still mad. Sure. So then I, I was like, okay, you have, I gave myself a time limit. And I said, you can be mad about this till about 10 o'clock and then it's done. <laughs> And I, I just ranted and raved in my head for about 20 minutes. And then it was like 10 o'clock. Okay. It's over. Move on now. And I love that. 
I've never in my life been able to do that ever. It's, it, I don't even know if you realize this is what you're doing, but the cool thing, you're, you're literally separating yourself from everything and just looking at like the program. Because the thing is so many people don't realize they're caught up in an emotional subconscious psychological program. And then it just, they wonder why it runs rampant, but they're like, I got to mm -hmm. fix the problem, but I'm the problem. But then you can't just get rid of you. That doesn't make sense versus you're like, okay. And you lean back and you're like, that's a program. Why am I freaking out about this? It's actually like, it's, it's fascinating to me that we can think about what we think about. Yeah. It, but like, I think it was Dr. Joe Dispenza that said it best is like, if we, we can't escape a jail, we don't know we're trapped in. You just became aware that you're like, oh, I'm fucking in prison mentally and emotionally. So I'm going to start thinking about this different now. And then all of a sudden it's easier to separate yourself. And it's just, uh, mm -hmm. it's just amazing. You know, um, sorry, I heard a weird, my camera was beeping and I'm like, I've never heard that beep in this room before. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, let me ask you this. I was wondering, uh, you brought this up in one of our emails the other day and I wanted to talk about it. Um, I actually just read a, in my current read right now, I'm reading James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. And he's talking about this where he says, um, the person who, hang on, how, how'd he word that? I have it in my notes. Um, he, he said it best. He said, who can, the person who can stay bored the longest wins. Now you we were talking in uh, one of your emails the other day about how like you just embraced how boring this is and it's now become part of routine. And, but like you specifically use the term boring, but that's what a lot of people struggle with. They're like, I'm bored and I want to go do something else. How, how talk about that. I, I just, you know what? I like routine. I really, I really thrive with routine. I don't like change. Change is like hard for me quite often and I struggle with it. Like, so having something that I do every day is great. I like that. So I just like to just, it gets boring, but it's, I, it's fine. I like it. Yeah. I, I, I know what's coming next. Right. Right. So. Well, I see a lot of people, it's like, it's one of the, I, I personally think it's one of the biggest pitfalls that people go through subconsciously, which is why that leads them to falling off is their constant in, I have to keep this exciting. I, every, every other day or every week has to be new workouts. I have to adjust my calories all the time. Um, journal, I bore, I've journaled the past 20 days. I'm going to stop doing that because I'm bored of it. Like it, it, but you've like, instead of seeing that as a bad thing, you're just like, it means routine. Routine is good and safe. I'm going to keep with it. Yeah, for you know? sure. Now you just filled up your first journal. How did that feel? I remember the first time I filled up mine, I was like, it hit me in the face. I'm like, this is no longer in my head anymore. And it was like a yeah. big pivot for me. Yeah, it was, uh, it was like kind of, as I was getting closer and closer, I was like, holy crap. I've like, that's a lot of, that's a lot of ranting and raving some days. And it's a lot of just crying and getting stuff out. But I was like, that's, that's crazy it's 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 nuts that would be like this is so fucking gross what i'm about to say that would be like seeing a picture of all the poop you shit out in a year and it's like that was inside me yeah that's exactly. disgusting but it's the same thing as like whenever i fill up a journal i like look at it and i flip through it and i'm like this was trapped in my head and it's no longer trapped in my head but i think people still have the belief that like okay but how does this help me lose weight you know what i mean yeah and but, but that's, and that's the exact reason why I wanted you to come on and talk about this is because you've like, not just said, okay, I'll try it. You like have ran with it and seen some insane results with it mentally, but also physically. And like, can you imagine like now for you now looking, knowing what you know now, could you imagine trying to attack any goal without like checking in here first? No, never. No, I need to look inside first, deal with it and process it a little bit and then move it, move forward. I love that so much. All right. Wrapping up one last question. Um, what advice would you give to anyone who's stuck where you used to be? Well, like, you're never going to be able to move forward and left if you're not ready. So you need to be in a spot where you are ready to just take stuff and just go with it. Just, I mean, I just ran with it just cause I was just like, well, let's what's the worst that could happen? So right. just be open to it and give it a shot, I guess. See, I would argue you weren't ready though. I, I don't know. I, I think I was kind of ready and I wasn't ready. Like I was right on the edge, I think. I think you I, just said, fuck it and took the plunge. And it was like, cause see, I, I don't think people are always fully ready. Like it's like, like we wait mentally till we're physically ready, but like physically doing it is how we get mentally ready. 
You know yeah, what I mean? That, yeah. So now if someone, like, I think I was ready. I was just like kind of looking in the door and yeah. just kind of peeking in and seeing what it would look like. And then I just decided, you know what, let's just go for it, whatever. It. Now let's say somebody isn't like in a place, let's say where they could do coaching. What's, what stuff would you say to them? Like, like, like someone sees you in line at Starbucks and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're that Ashley girl on Jared's podcast. Hey, like what advice would you have for me? And they just have a couple minutes while your, your foods or your, while your coffee is being made. What advice would you say for someone who's struggling with the same things you used to struggle with? Well, I have a couple of friends that kind of are, and I just, yeah. I just slide your content over all the time. <laughs> I'm like, here, oh, look, this helped me. This helped me. Um, just like find somebody that something or somebody that gets it. It's about what kind of like what you said, like it kind of, you surround yourself by what your, you know, your inputs and stuff. Right. So mm -hmm. change what you're surrounding yourself with and it'll come a lot easier. Yeah. No, I love that so much. Awesome girl. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Like this is a big vulnerable thing for you. So I, like, I really appreciate you being so willing to talk to, you know, some thousands of people about your shit. <laughs> so, yeah, no worries. I love it. Awesome girl. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Awesome.